you men. Think of your attitudes toward a woman, talking to you men. And you will find that you want to create a certain impression on her, don't you? You want to create a certain type of response. Now, why do you want that woman to respond in a certain way, to like you, to agree to sex or whatever? Why, why do you want that? You want it because you use everything, including women, to try to find your identity. You, you, you don't understand me when I tell you that you men back there, you are compelled to use everything, including women, to try to find out who you are. And you always fail, of course. For one thing, you think that that woman wants the same thing that you do. You think that her mind works like your mind. I will tell you, there is a male mind and there is a female mind, a male psychic system and a female psychic system. And what you want her to want is not what she wants. But all you know is what you want and there's no way you weak little men can put yourself in her place and ask, now what does she want? There's no way you can do that because you are not a man. Only a real man can put himself in the place of a woman because he understands her. And it should be clear to you that I'm not talking about what you'll commonly call good manners in a woman or being generous toward her or anything like that. Now, to the women a little bit. We'll go back and forth. You poor women. Every one of you here and every one of you listening to me, you are a settler. Now, now careful, don't, don't jump to definitions yet because you don't know how I am defining it. All of you women here are settlers regarding a man. Do you mean to tell me that, that if you could have had a better man that you would have, cho that you, uh, would have settled for, for another man? What I'm trying to say is, the man you have in your life now, ladies, is the best you could get. That's a fact. What brought the two of you together? Accident. You happen to be working in the same office. You happen to be at the same party together, something like that. And you met. And both of you settled, but especially the woman. You settled because you said, I've looked around, this is the 20th party I've been to, and I better grab him before it gets any worse. <coughs> Let me tell you, ladies, you meet any man, it can't get much worse. It can't get much worse because all lost men are lost men. See, now, let me tell you your, your trouble. You don't know who you are either. And you don't, you don't know what you want. There's something vaguely stirring inside of you that says, maybe a man can provide what I need, but I'm not sure what I need. I'm not quite sure what it is, but maybe a man can provide it. And so you look around, you have lots of boyfriends, maybe lots of husbands, lots of affairs, lots of sex. You enter into all that. And how long have you been doing that? You know how long you've been doing that. And where are you? Right back at the first man. The tenth man is just as bad as the first man, isn't he? Maybe worse. One hope because you're responsible for yourself, essentially, ladies. One hope is that someday, maybe, you will meet a man who comes to a class like this, who has just a little bit more sense than the rest of the idiots you run around with and waste your time with. Let me tell you, you're a lot better off alone 
than running around with those foolish and sometimes degenerate men. And they're all weak. You've never been out with a strong man, have you? Ooh, what an experience it would be for all you ladies if you were to be somewhere and you would meet a man and you're normally attracted to each other, you know, normal attraction, you kind of like each other. What a, a rare and marvelous experience it would be if you were to meet a man and he was, be he was beginning to grow up. Let me tell you, ladies, leave all and follow that man. But careful, you're awful stupid. There's no, there's no end to measuring your female stupidity. You have to have the foundation of the teachings of this class in back of you so that you can begin to study yourself and study the men you meet. Only then do you have any chance at all of reading, of, of meeting a real man. You've never met one in your life. Furthermore, until you develop yourself a bit more, you'll never recognize him if you see him. In fact, you may despise him. If there's something seriously wrong with a woman, she will in fact despise a real man because he is representing something that she has said in her heart, I don't want. So you see, you have work to do on yourself, first of all. New clods out there in the back row. I wish I could have thought of a worse insult. Maybe I will before the day is over. You stupid males in the back row there. If your girlfriend ever leaves you, my one response to that will be, hooray. Oh, ladies, if you leave him, I'll come over and congratulate you. Something has to wake that idiot up! And if you were beginning to recognize real male strength, and you start to react rightly toward, toward that man, and also react rightly toward weak men, men who are male in body only, all they have is a male, male body, and that's all they have. Their, their psychic system isn't male at all. It's weakness, it's water, it's nothing. you begin to, to recognize spiritual principles as they apply to sex and male-female relationship. As you begin to recognize that, you will, by the expression on your face, by the way you talk to that man, you will send a message to him. And how pathetic! It's all right, it's legitimate. If you begin to wake up and he doesn't, all right, that's fine. You're doing what you have to do toward the man, which is to tell him, look, your values are not my values anymore. What you want is not what I want. The destination to which you're traveling is not my destination. I have a different one. And you ladies go too far in that, and you won't have to tell him goodbye. He'll take off. You'll scare the life out of him. The reverse is true. Oh, it's just a shame, clods in the back row. It's just a shame that you're not men. Here, here, all these ladies here, and all the ladies of the world, want something different from what you want to give them. Primarily sex. I want to interrupt myself to tell you a little special secret. While I'm talking to you right now, I am seeing thoughts and ideas and the words to express them arise inside of me. 
then I put them into the English language and put them out there. Every once in a while, as I'm talking to you, and I'm watching inwardly as well as seeing you out there, every once in a while I'll see a certain thought and idea come up, and then the conscious censor interrupts it. What I'm saying is this. There are certain things that are involved in this very complex subject of sex and male-female relations. There are lots of subjects that I can't talk to you about. There are lots of ideas and facts that come up, and I, I myself allow the censor to come in, because if I said them to you, it would drive you crazy. You wouldn't know how to handle them. You wouldn't know where to fit them, especially you men. And you would get very excited in a wrong way. And you would do the wrong thing, say the wrong thing, and go completely off the track. That's a little side thought, the fact that I cannot tell you. Now, even if, if uh, talking to the men alone, I wouldn't say it to them. So. If you want to know what these secrets are, then you know what to do. Let me tell you that it's all a part of the general spiritual menu. It's offered on there. The very deep secrets regarding authentic attraction between men and women, between male and female. So you men, you want to excite what you call affection and love and reliability and companionship in a woman. You want that, and you create, you men want this, and you create the exact opposite in the ladies. You ladies, you ladies don't tell the men how you really feel toward them, do you? I know how you feel toward them. I know how you cry. I know how you say, ah. I, I don't want to do it myself anymore, and you shouldn't. You shouldn't do it for yourself. And the clods back there, they have no ability to do it for you. That's your heartache. That's your part of the pain of being immersed in a world of psychic sleep where you want something desperately of a spiritual nature and a real man, a real man is a spiritual man and a spiritual man is a real man. You're looking for that and you can't find it. So you look around and you cry. So men, I tell you, the, the responsibility for the right aggression, now you have wrong aggression, wishy-washy aggression, pathetic little little men back there. See, I've seen it right in this class. If I wish I had a long notebook, I could number it. You women, you, you women smile at a man and his afternoon is made. And he goes into dreamland. Some woman that he likes thinks is attractive, smiles at him. And every every time she smiles at him, this happens right in this room. Don't you think I don't know what's going on in here half the time unconsciously? I see you watching them. When the woman smiles at the man, it is followed by a pleasurable feeling in him, followed by despondency. Because he knows he has nothing in it to follow up. There is nothing in it in him that could follow it up. Let's see. Uh, all I know is the old-fashioned. What's a what's a new-fashioned word for courting, dating? Y you men don't know how to pursue a woman. You know, all you know is how to stumble after her and you knock each other down on the sidewalk. You're that awkward. Why didn't you grow up spiritually? So that in your real maturity, your new maturity, 
your real male spiritual adulthood, you look at a woman and you never, never, never crack a smile. You big phonies. See, in your idiocy, in your desire, all you know what to do is to smile at a woman. All you know what to do is please her. You smile at her. Look, you know, see these little innocent creatures down here? They're not so innocent. They're pretty perceptive, psychologically. See, nature gave women an inborn warning system against men. But unfortunately, it isn't enough even for them. They're so stupid, they get taken by men. They don't listen to the warning system. They listen to their own stupid false needs, false needs for security. But if you men were adults like you should be, you would never smile at you. Don't, you I hope you're getting the point of what I'm talking about. You don't indeed try to get a thing from a woman. You could, you, you could be, listen to this, men. I'm serious now. I'm not trying to be funny or trying to be sexier, and I'm very serious. You men could go into a room where there are a hundred absolutely beautiful, attractive, desirable women, every one of them exactly your type. And if you were a... Look, I'm, I'm telling you, if you were a real man, not the mama's boys that you now are, if Picture it, a big room, 100 beautiful women, attractive. You could walk in the front door and start walking past every one of them, and you'd keep on walking by in a straight line, not looking left to right. And those women would smile on you, and they would fawn on you, and they'd come over and run their fingers down the side of your arm, and they'd get in front of you and look cute and look sexy. I'd give you the come on signal. You'd better listen to me. And if you were a real man, you'd come in that door at that end and you'd walk right through every one of those hundred women and you'd eventually have your back to every one of them and you would walk out of that door on the other side without smiling at one of them, without touching them, without even wanting them. So, <laughs> You little boys back there, you high school boys, you can't imagine a situation like that, can you? To you, that would be paradise refound, wouldn't it? All the women wanting you and chasing you and desiring you, all the sex you want, all the adoration and all the service. Now I'll tell both you men and women something something that you don't know. There is something higher than a woman. There's something higher than a man. There's something higher than sex. There's something higher than you feeling yourself loved, which is phony. No woman ever loved you, man. You've never been loved in your life. You ladies, you've never been loved by a man in your whole life. You've been lusted after. You've been sexed. And you've had dinners bought for you. You've taken vacations, things like that. You've never been loved. You've never been loved because there was no one there to love you. And you, know, you had no love to give back to the man. Let me tell you what love is. Love is that man coming in the one door just keeping a steady pace, walking down right through the middle of all those enticing, desirable, beautiful women, and walking out on the other side. So with that in mind, here's what love is. Love is indifference to human charm. Spiritual maturity is indifference to sexual tra attraction. Well, of course you're indifferent to it. 
you're indifferent to it because you have something higher. Now, you, know, you see, I know how your minds are working. I know what you're thinking. So you always leap to conclusions. Did you ever, in all these years we've had classes, ever hear me say there was something, anything wrong with sex? Did you ever hear me say that? You never heard me say that. Did you ever hear me say that there's something wrong with a, a nice boy and a nice girl having a nice romance together? That's very nice. I'm just saying it's so hard to get the two of you together. There's just two idiots coming together. Now look, you come into this world and if by extreme self-sacrifice you finally find yourself, you then leave this world. And once you have left this world, you can come back to it any time you want. You can come back to this world, then you can have a wife if you want. You can have a business if you want. You can do anything that's normal, normal and right in this world. Look, when you have visited the other world, when you've been there, when you know what it's all about, you know what to put first. And if you put, if you put rightness first, then you can engage in a right relationship with a man or with a woman, and there'll never, ever, 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 as far as you're concerned, be a difficulty. And you will be in charge of that relationship, men, if you should go this far, if you should come into this world, then go out of it, then come back again. You will be in 100% charge of that woman, not 99%. Don't you ever give her 1%. And if you give her 1%, it's because you still have stupid images of being kindly, and you've been reading stupid women's lib literature and fall for that. Why are you such robbers that you rob that woman of all that you could give her? Which is all of your strength, which is not your strength, you understand? Which is all of real strength, which is what she wants, and which is real spirituality. And when you understand, when you understand that you must not deny yourself anything, that you must go 100% spiritual for yourself, then it'd be impossible for you to ever shortchange the woman. Now, now, that woman will fall in love with you. And you, on your part, will never ever be able to hurt her impossible for you to ever hurt her as you do now. You hurt the woman you're with by being you. What are you? I know what you are. How pathetic. How, how can you help but hurt a woman when you're angry, when you don't know what life is all about? When you're an internal blabbermouth and you're talking about your plans as if she cares? Why don't you try sometime, you men, never talking to a woman about your precious little affairs anymore, your business, your politics. Why don't you try not boring her sometime? She'll appreciate that much. Maybe that would be a start for you. It's getting awful hot in here, and a half hour is up, so we'll take a 12-minute break. I know you girls are not so much interested in how to get along with a man, but how to get a man. Yeah. That's so dumb, huh? Why? Well, I'll tell you why. Because it's natural. Any woman who wants a man is properly feminine. Now, go slow. 
I don't know if you've ever been to a bar. I mean, we won't hold it against you if you... You ever been to a bar? Here they are, sitting at the bar, right? With their little cherries in the little drinks. There's a drink that has a cherry in it, right? And an olive in it. And they're drinking, they've had two martinis apiece. This isn't what we're talking about. See, that woman will settle for her idea of strength. Now, the idea of strength is not the same thing as sensing strength in a man. And woe unto that woman after her first, second, or tenth martini. Because that man, ladies, will be a criminal. He may rob banks or he may not rob banks. He may go out and assault someone and steal his wallet or he may not. But the very fact that he's in that bar in the first place means that he's a criminal. And so is she. Here's the woman, we'll take it from the woman's viewpoint. She's sitting there and she's lonely. And please don't be embarrassed. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. But even the intimacy of sex with that man for one night will give her a sense of being protected of being held close, of being loved. But you'll see her at the same bar and the same stool the next night. See? So she's doing the wrong thing. The natural female instinct to have a man is perfectly right. But that woman has to start from a higher level in order to seek a man, to find a man. And if she was to get on to these things that we're talking about, eventually she'd stop going to the bar. It, that may take a long, long time. She'll be torn between, between the decency she's beginning to sense and the bums and the crumbs she meets down there. And she is not that stupid, by the way. She knows very well what's going to happen to her when she goes to the bar and meets the bum. She knows what happens because that is what always happens. And that is the only thing that can happen. That she's going to get involved and the man may be nice to her for a little bit, a day or two. And then she has to go back the next night. So a woman has to start on a higher level than where she presently is in relationship to a man. She has to, she has to forget the man for now. She has to forget him because the only thing she can do is attract what she is and she's in trouble. So let's say that a woman does come to a group like this and she begins to understand these things. She will gradually begin to understand, first of all, where she's made the mistake. And this in itself is a long, long period of going through shame, of remembering the trouble she got into with a man or the near trouble she got into and takes a long time for to even correctly erase those wrong connections with her former life erase them simply through understanding and canceling time through consciousness now leave her there for a minute away from the bar and the church and the business world and that's a monstrosity to a woman in the business world. What a monstrosity. A woman executive. How terrible. So we'll switch to the man now. Gentlemen, you're just as crummy as she is. She's the woman in the bar and in the church there. And you're the man there. And you're equally a religious alcoholic or an alcoholic either place now now listen to this a woman gentlemen will begin to understand what real 
strength is, oh, when will she be attracted to that? She'll give anything to have the company of, of a really strong man, a man who's inwardly, spiritually strong. And one sign that she senses, that she knows that the man is strong, is that he is able to leave her. Oh, those, those derelicts and those bums that she met both in church and at the bar. She noticed something they all had in common. They couldn't leave her. I follow, I realize they hit and run. I, I understand that. But they were dependent on her. They wanted something from her. Uh, comfort. Mama's boy wanted something from the woman. But this woman, in studying these higher principles, begins to run across a different kind of a man. Uh, you men got a long ways to go. No, you don't qualify for any of this yet. I'm telling you about it. When she senses, really, that a man who has real strength, the kind of a man she really wants to have in her life, is, is a man who is affectionate toward her, who is kindly toward her, and I'll use the word generally speaking, who loves her, who cares for her, who is considerate of her, who knows that she exists too. This man this man knows that she exists, and he's tender toward her, and at the same time, he can walk out of that house anytime he wants. Now, he's not, now listen, he's not going to, he's never going to walk out of that house, ladies, unless you drive him out. And the first, the first sign he sees of your barroom behavior, that level, and your so-called religious behavior, the first sign of that, he's gone. Because he's strong enough in himself. He doesn't need you. He doesn't need you. You can't, you can't hold a man by giving him sex. You can't hold a man by cooking his dinners and sewing his shirts for him. Now, some of you have thought so, haven't you? And you found out different. So, but we have to go really farther back than this. I have to hit highlights now, sometimes details when I can get into them. But here's the details. Most of you, if unless you do a lot better than you're doing now, will it never be, even be in a position where a man would care for you enough to leave you. Because he's looking at you, and he's studying you. He's, he's hearing what you say, how you talk, and how you behave. And if he sees you wearing a cigar in your hair instead of a flower, That's a message. That's an example of what I'm, the point I'm trying to get over. A real man demands, not requests. He demands a real woman. So theoretically speaking, the man meets a woman and she wants something higher. And he drills her with his eyes, and he says, My dear lady, now you listen very carefully, because I'm only going to say it once. One time and one time only. You give up the bar habits and the church habits and your female executive habits, or goodbye. He's not emotional about it. He's utterly calm, utterly practical, utterly rightly intellectual. Okay, lady, here it is. You want it stronger than that? Now look, lady, 
You either do what I tell you to do, which will be right, never be cruel, it will always be in your favor, whether you think so or not. You will always do as I tell you to do, or you can do what you want to do. Now, what is fairer than that? Is he putting any, any tyrannical impositions on her? My dear lady, you will either do what I tell you to do, or do what you want to do. Now, what's unfair about that? Perfectly fair, right? Perfectly just. Now this woman is faced with her choice, isn't it? Yeah, all her life, she's been used to meeting men like you out there. All her life, she has been meeting little weasels like you out there. And she tested you the very first time you met. The very first time you met, she tested you. She wanted to know what you were like. And it didn't take her long to find out. And she groaned. And she sighed. And she said, well, I guess this is the best I can do. What do you think of that, gentlemen? That your classification of those women was this is the best she could do. And anyway, the man telling the woman that is saying it from strength. Here we go. He is doing a marvelous thing for this woman. He is giving her the opportunity of her whole life, actually, of her entire life. She has an opportunity to make a decision in favor of what is true, what is right, what is strong, or what is in favor of the bar room and the church and the executive office. Every woman disparts start over so you can understand it better. There is a very strong part of every woman that despises the man in her life. Husband, boyfriend. She absolutely despises him, but she's settled. This is the best I could do. I looked around, and this is all I could find. And do you understand the details of why she despises that man? Well, see, the settling part, you know, they live together and sleep together and have fun together and all that. So there's a little trading there. But she despises him because a right part of her feminine nature yearns for him to be right to. Understanding her own weakness she understands the weakness and lack of real command in the man. I tell you, men, what a, what a woman would give to find a man who cares for her enough to say, get rid of the bar room, get rid of the church, get rid of the executive office, or I walk out the door, my dear lady. And the man, from his part, he is saying, Oh, no. I've lived long enough. I've lived long enough myself down at the bar, down at the church. I've lived there long enough myself to, ever, to, not, to not only not go back myself, but I'm not going to tolerate anyone in my life. Who still chooses that? So, dear lady, if you choose the strength, the man is saying, if you choose the internal power, force that I have, if you choose that, choose that, then fine. Now I can help you to get rid of the bar room and the church. Ah, oh, if you ever in your life, ladies, ever get into such a relationship with a man 
what a, a beautiful, marvelous experience it will be. Because you no longer want to get away with it. You're sick and tired of men who will let you get away with it. And they are, aren't they? You're living with them. You know them. You hear them talk. You know, you know self-destruction when you see it. That is, you sense it. You're not conscious of it in a higher understanding of that. But you can sense it. And you, you, this is why where the despising comes in. And you, you look at that man with his weakness and his arguing with the gas station attendant over some trivial thing. And you know how weak he is. And for the next 50 miles, sitting next to him in your car as you drive home, you groan, don't you? You groan that this is who you have to go home with tonight and for the next week and for the next year. And let's see, you made those very, those, those very, what you call sacred marriage vows to stick with him. And you, you wonder what on earth you walked into when you walked into this world. You look around the whole business and you see how mad it is, how insane it is. And you're sitting next to that man in the car and you're so glad that he can't read your mind, aren't you? If he, if he could read your mind, some of you ladies may know this, if he could read your mind, he'd reach over and slap you physically, wouldn't he? Some of those brutes who hit women physically. So you're glad of that, aren't you? And so, you ladies, you look, you look at that man and you know there's nothing there for you. Now, switch over to the, the, the men's side again. You, you know what you are, you men? You pitiful little wretches that you are. You'd do anything for sex, wouldn't you? You'd sell your soul for sex, wouldn't you? You'll fawn before the woman, you'll buy her things. You pretend that you're, that you're decent, you pretend that you like her. And then when, when you get what you want, you're, when you get what you want, you're still the brute that you were before. You're still the brute. You're still the lost human being. You still don't know what it means to be decent. May I make a, a very radical suggestion to you men, it'll be radical to you. Maybe you've never heard this before, so I'll tell it to you perhaps for the first time. Why don't you put your wholehearted attention on being a spiritually strong man? Why don't you sometime determine in your mind that there's something higher than sex or the other benefits that you get from being with a woman. I know there's other things, companionship, someone to talk to, things like that. Why don't you determine sometime that you're going to be daring enough to put these studies first before anything, before any woman until you begin to see for yourself how, how sexually and romantically mixed up you have been all the time. There is a reason, gentlemen, why you don't and can't have a right relationship with a woman. And I'll tell you what the reason is. The reason is you. The reason is your nature. The reason is the way your mind works. The reason is you're too lazy to investigate whether there might be a way to think and live other than the way you presently think and live. And so you bring the house crashing down upon both you and the woman. 
Now I will tell you, I, I'm quite aware, very fully aware, I'm a man, I know, I know that the powerful attraction of romance, male-female contacts of the sex act itself. As a matter of fact, I better tell you something. I know personally how powerful it is a thousand times more than you do. Because with you, it is all unconscious. You don't know how to think toward a woman. You men here do not know how to think toward a woman, how to act toward her. You don't know how to think correctly toward sex and toward the sex act. All you can do is be enslaved by it, overwhelmed by it, and want it. But wanting it is not the same thing as understanding it. Because if you understood your own mind, if you understood the enormous attraction of sex between a man and a woman, if you understood that, that would be one very long leap for you towards spiritual strength. Now, didn't it ever occur to you that this sweet thing called romance and hand-holding and moonlight and roses and sex, didn't it ever occur to you that that just, is just as much a legitimate and right subject of study as emotions, as human relations in general? Didn't it ever occur to you that it is a necessity to understand that? Or do you make the same mistake there that you make toward everything else? One, you're a little bit in awe over the subject, or embarrassed by it, or you feel guilty if you think about sex thoughts, but you do it anyway all the time, you just don't know it. But for a number of reasons, <coughs> you fail to bring male-female relations right into the mainstream of your total studies, spiritual studies, about you and life in general. You fail to bring it in so that it's just as much as a part of looking at and understanding as the other topics that I mention. All right, now that applies to both men and women. Now, nature has decreed that the man is the aggressor toward a woman. That's so natural, you don't have to comment on it. You see it, you understand it. In a normal, in a normal relationship, the man chases the woman, of course. The woman runs, but not too fast sometimes. <laughs> and eventually she catches him. <laughs> <laughs> now, the aggressor, being the aggressor, being the man, has the major responsibility because he is the one who has to make decisions in that relationship. So the main duty, I almost said burden, <laughs> the main duty is on the man to act properly toward the woman. And I told you earlier 25 minutes ago, that the woman, being passive, she flutters her eyelids and waits for the man to come to her. And when she, he does, by the way, ladies, you must not say a word. You can flutter your eyelids, that's legitimate, you know, prettily. <laughs> but you must not say a word. If you do, if you say the first word, you'll wreck everything because you'll give that mama's boy what he was hoping for. You won't know he's a mama's boy till after it's too late. You're very deeply involved with him. So the man, being the aggressor, has to make all the decisions. 
And earlier in the talk, I gave you one of his, the chief decisions that he has to make toward the woman. And, and without this, believe me, it's going to be a bar room or church room relationship. And they'll either drink martinis together or sing hymns together, but in either case, they'll live in that home and hate each other. Well, they'll hate each other because they're both lost, and lost people hate everything, including themselves. Why should the spouse be an exception? But the major decision, one major decision that the man has... Now, dear lady, make up your mind right from the very start. I'm, I'm going to give you one guess, my dear wife, my dear girlfriend. Here's just two of us here in this house, sitting in this room, and I'll give you one, just one guess as to who's going to be the boss. And if she guesses wrong, <laughs> if she guesses wrong, a truly strong man will get up and walk out. Now, where does this leave you ladies? If you're fortunate enough to meet a man who's beginning to be strong in the first place, where does that leave you? It leaves you with a necessity to have enough sense to have enough of the bar room. It doesn't have to be all together because the man's going to help you kick the bar room out of you. To have enough sense to have enough of the bar room out of the way at the beginning of the relationship so you can begin to understand what he is doing and, let, and do indeed let him, let him be your strength as nature and God himself intended it to be. This wisdom, this wisdom, I said a minute ago, comes along in exact parallel, exact parallel, if you do it, exact parallel with your understanding of every other topic, subject in the spiritual book. But now look, now if you ladies are not in your right position yet, and if you men are not in your right position yet, that means that you're not doing your spiritual work in general yet, right? Ah, oh. oh, the pathetic little men out there. They see a woman, they see a pretty face or an attractive figure, and they're gone. That's not strength, that's childishness. And, you know, may I, I better tell you something else, too. You poor mama's boys out there, you little weaklings, you wouldn't know what to do with a woman if you had one. You wouldn't know how to behave toward her. That's right. If you knew how to behave toward her, you would behave rightly toward any woman, every woman, stranger, friend. Any woman. Now look, gentlemen, I'll, I'll tell you a secret, and you ladies, don't listen to this. <laughs> you are idol worshippers because you're weak, and you worship what you worship. Listen to this: you worship what you want from her. What is it? Besides sex, of course. Don't be a... You, you, you little cowards. You can't, you can't even say the word sex without getting embarrassed by it or getting disturbed by it. I, I wonder if there's one man seated in front of me who's even, who's even one... who's even 50% sexually right. I mean, in his emotions, in his mind. It's not physical so much, except in some cases your psychology towards sex. So you're worshipers of whatever you want from that woman. Foolish, stupid, weak men, and just exactly the kind of a man that she despises. The solution to everything we're talked about should be very plain to you now. 
which is to apply yourself 100% to spiritual principles and understand without being embarrassed by it or even, even excited about it. Don't you get excited about it either. That's just as bad. But simply know that your relationship, ladies, with a man, gentleman, toward a woman, this will all straighten itself out too as you grow internally, generally. You will be right, ladies, with yourself. Therefore, you will know how to handle a man when he is wrong. And that's very important for you to understand and to be able to do. When you are right, then without effort, you'll be able to handle a wrong man, whoever he is. Whether he's in your life or just beginning to get in your life or a stranger or whatever. So that no man is ever a threat to you. No man is ever a threat to you if you understand him completely. And I'll tell you, the first thing you should know about any man you meet, that he is a bum. That he has no sense about anything. He doesn't know how to treat you right. He doesn't know how to treat himself right. He has no brains at all. That's the first thing to know about him. Now, already you're protected. Because now you're not idealizing him as the drunk woman in the bar idealizes the drunk man who's going to go out of that bar and hold up a liquor store. And she gets hauled into it too because she was waiting in the car. She got dragged into it because she didn't know the man. And that's, that happens to be a physical crime. Oh, for every physical crime such as robbing a liquor store, think of the, the thousands of inner, inner crimes that you have been involved with because you didn't understand that man. And, and you, you gentlemen, the very same applies to you also. With the wisdom that comes from these teachings, with that, you can come into a room like this room is. You can go down at work. You can go wherever women are in the world. And gentlemen, you will be 100% in charge of every woman you meet, simply because you understand her. All right? I dare you to prove what I have said for yourself. Wouldn't that be the final proof? Mm -hmm. You do that, and you'll change everything, both men and both women. Then you'll have a right relationship. You'll have a nice relationship. You'll have a good relationship. You'll have a, you'll have a relationship that doesn't have the strain in it at all. And for the first time, ladies, you will, you will understand what it means to be rightly, rightly, spiritually dominated by a man. And you men will know for the first time what it means to rightly love that woman because you are spiritually dominating her. take 10 or 12 minutes. You should always be ready. Do you understand that? You don't understand that? To always be ready means there is nothing taking you away from being fully aware of the situation no matter what it is. Always ready, that means always alert, always seeing everything, including your own state. When you're ready, you can never be caught off guard. When you're not ready, you can always be caught off guard. Someone can shake you, shock you. Someone can suddenly shake you so that you wake up. And when you're awakened, you didn't know that you were asleep, did you? You ever notice it? Someone shocks you, wakes you up from some little thing, even a daydream. You shake your head. You didn't know you were in it. Always be ready. That means at any moment, you always know where you are and what you're doing all the time. Even when you're in practical thought, there's a part in back of that practical thought that is telling you, okay, break it off right now and pay attention to something else 
so that your attention is directed not by thought, not by desire, not by emotion, but by something that is higher than that that keeps you safe. If you want to keep having shocks all your life, getting hurt, then, then do not listen to what I said. If you want to avoid shocks by not being in the path of them in the first place, now look, I said every minute, and I mean when that music is playing, and I mean when you're seated here, you were asleep, every single one of you. You know what you were doing? Are you aware of what you were doing while we were waiting for that? One, you were watching me. You were seeing, wondering my reaction to it. Is he going to show annoyance, for example? Or what's going on inside of him? What, what is his facial expression saying? That was part of it. Another part was just sort of, just sort of waiting, sort of dully. Correct? And other things. Once upon a time, there was a boy bluebird. And he was a blue boy bluebird. <laughs> and he was blue both internally and externally because he didn't have a girl bluebird. <laughs> now, you girls remember, I'm talking about bluebirds. <laughs> I'm not about men's. So. But maybe you'll see a parallel. So this boy, Bluebird, was lonely, and he wanted a, a girlfriend, a Bluebird girlfriend. So he flew around, and he raided Witter Jones' blueberry patch a few times. <laughs> but all the time, no matter how many blueberries he got, he always went home to a lonely little nest. And every once in a while, he'd fly around, he'd see a very pretty girl, Bluebird. You know, pretty face and nice and all that. And he would yearn for her. But this, this boy bluebird was a good deal like human boys. I told you, you men, you wouldn't know what to do with a girl if you had one. You don't know how to behave toward them. You don't know how to act, do you? So you do something dumb something awkward. You go to the girl instead of making the girl come to you, and that's, that's your whole mistake. Didn't we discuss that this morning? You can apply that to what we're talking about now. So this boy, Bluebird, flew around, and he wanted a girl, Bluebird, so bad, he decided to get some help, get some advice. So we looked in the classified ads, for some advisors who helped lonely blue boy bluebirds. And sure enough, there was a classified ad, cost $2.50. <coughs> High class advice for lonely boy bluebirds. So he phoned the number and went on over and the advisor's desk and got some advice from him. And the advisors, advice in essence was, your problem, sir, is that you're not a gentleman. You've got to be polite toward a girl, Bluebird. They like a gentleman who's nice, who, who puts them first instead of thinking of yourself. So you've got to have courtesy, good manners. Be nice to her. Girls like nice Bluebirds, boy Bluebirds. So I said, ah, what a clout I have been. Thank you for your advice. How much? Fifty of Winter Jones blueberries. That's what it cost. So he gave them to her. <sighs> I have conquered the world of romance at last, he said. The forest is mine. The woods are mine. So he met a girl bluebird, and they started flying around a little bit together. And finally they came to Winter Jones' blueberry patch. And before he'd just go on in for it and take what he wanted, grab it and fly out, you know, before Witter Jones came out with her broom. Not anymore. He'd paid a lot of money for those lessons. So he's going to be polite and courteous. So he bowed his little blue head and he said, 
Lady Bluebird, you go first into the blueberry patch. And she said, thank you, and went in, got, a lot of, all, got all the choice bluebirds, blueberries, <laughs> blueberries, blueberries. And when the Winter Jones came along and chased him out, it came out that she had all the blueberries and he didn't have any. Well, so you sacrifice a little. You old bargainers! How many of you men have ever taken a woman out to dinner and that was it? You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know you're bargainers. They said, you're so low. Anyway, they went home to the, her nest, and he thought he might have a little good night peck. Get it? Peck. <laughs> Guess what? She'd been flying around this clubhouse. <laughs> she said no. <laughs> so he went away, and of course he was bitter. You know, you know what happened to all this politeness, right? All this courtesy and being nice and taking her out to a nice blueberry dinner at Winter Joe and Blueberry Patch. Nothing. But he didn't give up easy because that yearning to have a girl was still fiery. Looked in the classified ads again, another ad. Went and got advice. This time, see, this is the trouble with the advisors. They, they tell you the opposite things. One of them is wrong. They're both wrong. So this one told him, well, you, you have to be manly. You have to strong. You strong. You have to show her who's boss. Eh, that's okay. So I'll try that. Instead of being meek and polite, I'll be the boss. So we went to Witter jo Jones' blueberry patch again, and he flew in first. Picked self picture of being tough and all that. Got home. No good night. Now he was doubly bitter. All this time wasted, all this energy. Let me tell you, most men, I'll interrupt the story, most men are so low naturally that that natural lowness, what else, has to extend itself to their relations with women. Right? What else? So, he decided to keep trying. One more time, he said. This time he looked in a, another classified ad, and there's another advisor there. Went over to the advisor's house, and this time he's a little more wary. And he demanded this advisor to give his qualifications to him because he didn't want to spend all these blueberries for bad advice again. So the, <clears throat> the bluebird <clears throat> who was giving him the advice, who's called the bluebird of happiness, right? Huh? So he demanded to know from this bluebird of happiness advisor where where did he get all this wisdom that he was going to now pass on to him. So the bluebird of happiness told him, well, I've, I fly to Boulder City as often as I can. And I'd sit outside there and listen to the lectures and listen to the people. And I look inside and see all kind of birds inside the room there, <laughs> including a few cuckoos. <laughs> So the blue bluebird paid his blueberries and got the advice again, third advice. Now here's what the advice was. The bluebird happened and said, look, sir, have you ever noticed that not in just relationship to women, but with everything, one thing dominates your life, one thing. And that is aggressive effort. Isn't that true? You told me yourself. You took those girls out the blueberry patch. And you tried to behave in a certain way. You tried to conform to the pattern of the advice. And no matter which way you put it, whether you were nice and quiet and meek and courteous, that didn't work and the opposite didn't work either. Which means, sir, that as long as you are trying to follow the advice of anyone else or your own wrong advice, you're never, you can have a lot of girlfriends, you may have 50 bluebird girlfriends, but you're never going to have a right relationship with them because, sir, you don't see even the simplest, most fundamental fact of any kind of a right human relationship, which is for you to be right with yourself. 
Now I'll talk to you in your relationships, whether ever they might be. Haven't you seen how you're dominated by effort? And when that is a fact, it means you will also be dominated by frustration, by fear of failure. All of you men in this room, and there's no exceptions to it, you fear failure with women. I'm not talking about necessarily a, a romance, but even in talking to them in business or having a, a light relationship with them, you fear failure with them just because you fear failure with yourself. You're, you, you are not at ease with yourself, are you? Now you tell me, come on now. If there's chaos inside of you when you're all alone, how do you, how do you expect that chaos to go away when you meet a man or when you meet a woman? How do you expect anything to be any different as long as you are operating from what you presently are? And yet you'll keep trying and trying and switching your techniques and always hoping, of course, always hoping, gentlemen, and ladies too, this works both ways, you understand? Always hoping that you'll come across someone who just happens to like you exactly as you are presently constituted. You men, with your suppressed jealousies toward other men, they're more successful or whatever, now, you have that inside you, and you carry that into a relationship. And when you carry your dark parts into a relationship with a woman, it must, absolutely must, influence every way you behave toward her, including self-centeredness. Have any of you girls ever spent an evening listening to a man talk? Huh? Who do you talk about? You know, don't you? Why do you think, why do you, let me rephrase that, why do you put such a value on action instead of on being? Instead of doing something, why don't you try to be someone? We had that this morning. You, you do so. Gentlemen, you want to hear something absolutely astonishing? I'm, what I'm going to tell you next is an absolute truth. If you will go a long, 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 long ways into getting rid of yourself, of your human personality, of your acquisition ideas and so on, if you will do that, listen to this, if you will go all the way, you will be 100% ch in charge of every single woman on this earth. You will understand her perfectly. It doesn't mean you have a relationship, close relationship to every woman on earth. It means you understand them, and that is the right relationship. Now, I said this goes both ways, but I'll, I'll put it this way. Many of the women, gentlemen, many of the women that you would meet, you'd cross the street to avoid them if you saw them on the street. That is your right relationship. You have nothing in common with her, and you know you don't. How, how can a right, true spirit have anything in common, have anything to like, to use that familiar word? How can a right spirit like a woman who is hard, who is bitter? So you avoid her and others like her. What about other women? What about other women? You meet a nice girl. What do you call a nice girl? A girl who gives you what you want? What's your definition of a nice girl? There's only one. 
tell you what a, a nice girl, you girls, listen. A nice girl is a girl who knows she's lost. That's the beginning. You know that. And out of that knowledge and out of your own self, self-knowledge will come something that that bluebird could never grasp because he was trying to be something from himself and what he was was all wrong, so therefore he always acted from wrongness and always repelled the girl and himself. You ever think that you repel yourself? Aren't you disappointed with yourself? That's repelling yourself. But out of all this knowledge that goes farther than mere thinking, out of that will come a conscious detachment, gentlemen, ladies. Out of that will come a conscious detachment from everyone. I'm not just the ladies, gentlemen, from men too. You men, if you want a right relationship to a woman where you're authentically in charge and where she can't blackmail you in any way, if you want that, one way you can study to see where you're wrong is to see where you're wrong in your ordinary business and social relationships with other men. If any of you men still have heroes of any kind, your boss, hero of history, or whatever. If any of you men still have heroes, you can't have a right light relationship with a woman. Because that simply means you're not yourself. It means that you have set up a pattern and you say, ah, if I could just be like that man, maybe then I would be attractive to the world in general and maybe to women in particular. For many years, as you tread the spiritual path, you will see, well, I will change that, you will, will not see that you are indeed following a pattern of imitation, even spiritually. And all, all the mad religious world does that. They read about some great historical religious leader of Christianity or Muslims or whatever. And if you could study them clearly, you would see that it's simply nothing but imitation of their human personality. Which means that individual, those millions and millions of individuals, are not living from themselves. And it's very interesting as you keep treading the path, to see the falling away of your formerly unconscious imitations of other men. Now look, I've given you a very valuable clue, men. Now I'm talking about, we're talking now about relationships with women, and I've given you a start. You, you, you should be completely independent of every other man psychologically, spiritually. And the more, the more you are in charge of other men, the more you will be in right charge of women. Now let me tell, tell you men something that happened to you. Search your memory a little bit. Do you remember when you were younger, when you were a boy, remember that, that very stern, hard-faced female teacher you had? Remember that when you were maybe a little older and you started your first bank account, you went down to the bank and she could see that you were 18 years old and, and she was a 50-year-old woman and she was sick. And, well, what are you withdrawing your money for? And you answered her, right? Right? What do you want to draw It's your business, but you thought it was her business because she said it was her business. I'm talking about her manner and the expression on her face. You've been a better listen to me. I'm talking about your relationships to women. 
a third example, think for yourself, and a fourth one. I am talking about a particular type of domineering, sick woman who looked at you when you were 10, 20, 25, looked at you and could make you react the way she planned to make you react with her, with her neurotic, stern, sick, unsmiling face and manner. Right? Nod your head, every one of you. Now, that, let me, you listen to me. That woman is still very much alive in you, tormenting you, thwarting you, preventing you from breaking out of yourself. Furthermore, because the mind works so poorly, your unconscious recollections of that woman and her manner, and you may have been, been far more than just one incident, all these incidents are still alive in, in your mind and will, they must influence your behavior toward women because you'll be seeing them through your experience of the past. And when a woman doesn't smile at you on the first time you meet her, you will go back into recollection. This is all unconscious. Remember the man in bed who was unconscious to what was going through? That will go through your mind and it will color everything you say toward the woman and how you behave toward her. Now, how can you have a, a right and free relationship to her when you are such a mess? When you are not living free at the moment you look at her and talk to her. You are not dealing with her at all. Something else is, something foreign to your real nature is. You, th you, think, you think that you're dealing with it, you're not at all. And when it's all over and she didn't warm up to you, and I don't blame her, because she's, she's reading you very carefully, you know. When it's all over, then you blame yourself for being so awkward and so clumsy, which you were. Ah, look at the, another, another mistake you just made. You identified with your awkwardness because you didn't understand that that stern-faced woman in the bank or in the schoolroom was still living her wrongness out through you. Now, now for the nice part. It's all nice because it's knowledge. <clears throat> you will be able to recognize female types, and there are different types. And yet, gentlemen, in another way, they're all alike. They're all scared. They're all uncertain. They all wish that you were a man who knows what he's talking about. So, they're alike and they're different, but here's the point. types, levels of, of maturity or immaturity. <clears throat> Nothing makes any difference. As if it makes any difference to a, a beam of light, what it shines on in the darkness. Whether it's a lowly rock or a tree or a river, it doesn't make any difference. It lights up and understands everything. When you finally, gentlemen, become a real man and you pour the light of your understanding on all the women no matter where or how close or far the relationship you will be in charge look you understand this maybe you go to a woman and you want something from her. What do you want? Companionship. You want sex. You want marriage. What do you want from her? You want something from her. She, she's no dummy. You're not the first man she's met. She looks at you and, and she adds and subtracts. She gets the piece of paper and puts a line down. <laughs> well, he's 10 years older than I am. 
On the other hand, he's the vice president of General Motors. <laughs> that can cancel out 10 years. <laughs> So she adds and subtracts too, and wonders whether, you, whether she should enter into a bargain relationship with you or not. If she does, you're going to fight. Now, a real man looks at a woman, and the way the way he looks at her, a real man, the way he talks to her and deals with her, you know, you know what his, his first two words are? No bargain. Forget it, lady! When I was 20, you could have taken me. When I was 25, shall I go on, gentlemen? <laughs> Or is that getting uncomfortably close? <laughs> and look, look! You ladies are followers, I know you. You play your games with the men. Look at, I said it was beautiful, and look at the beauty of it. You meet a woman, and she's very attractive to you, very pretty, and you'd like a relationship with her, one degree or another, one to marry her, whatever. You, you look at that woman, and for some reason or other, not having anything to do with your state, she says no. What's that to you? Now, don't you dare, don't you dare add the phrase, there's plenty of birds in the woods. That's all wrong. I'm telling you, gentlemen, if you ever say that, you're about on the lowest dungeon there is. If the woman would like to have a relationship with you, already it has been established, it has been settled, it has been settled once and for all who is in charge. My dear lady, I like you enough to not let you be in charge. Any, any man who bows to a woman doesn't like her at all. Right? You lady, I know you know that. There's the lady in here who's missing what I'm saying here. So, you know what a light spirit is? A light, free, happy spirit. You can, you, look, when you have a light, free, happy spirit, you walk through the world of both men and women. And if someone comes up to you, you talk to them. If someone doesn't come up to you, you don't talk to them. One thing you never do. You never, you never sit in this room on that wall and look at that pretty girl over in the opposite wall and yearn for her and hope that maybe you could meet her. If something's going to work out, maybe I could meet her in some way. But there's so many obstacles. See, you're thinking about this. The lady over there seeing the man over on that wall over there that appeals, the same thing. Ah, what, what a way to live. What a dreadful way to live. But you say, I've got to fulfill these needs. You said it. God didn't. Do you suppose then maybe that there might be someone smarter than you 